Big hello to you, so great to see you and I hope I find you well. I'm Jenny Kirk, welcoming you up here to Weir Yard. And today we're going to be taking a look at a model that we've followed quite closely through the stages of development. And this is a model that was announced quite some time ago and we were lucky enough to be able to see the EPs and also the livery samples in an exclusive video that you might remember. And this is of course the TMC and Backman collaboration for the G5044 locomotive. Motive. There's a plethora of different versions available and this really did impress me when we were looking through those livery samples at just how many different detail variants the tooling does allow for. Well the model has finally arrived and I took the opportunity whilst we were at Getz to pick one up from the TMC stand so that we could take a good close look at the production model and see just what you will get out of the box. This is a model that I followed really quite closely. Closely, so it's a great pleasure to be able to take a good close look at this model. We're also going to be showing you exactly how to DCC fit your own example and this will take a Next18 decoder and you'll find all the details on that towards the final third of this video. So if you're here for the DCC fitting guide then stay tuned for that. And don't forget as well that you can head on over to Patreon and it's a great way to help support the channel and keep us making the videos that you want to see. We've got a number of different tiers of great rewards and you can also see your name in lights in the end credits too and uh, a big big thank you to all of you absolute heroes that make this channel possible. We've got a link in the description box as well which takes you to TMC where you can find all the different versions of the G5 model. Now this is an exclusive model so you'll only be able to pick it up from TMC and uh, each of the livery options are available in DCC ready and all also DCC sound fitted and we did look into that in the livery sample video that we did some time ago. So if you want to hear what the model sounds like then we've got a link in the description box as well to help you find that previous video. But without further ado let's take a look at the example that I've picked up. I really couldn't resist that pretty pre-grouping Northeastern Railway green livery. It really is something that is quite striking but don't worry if you're a BR or an LNER model they've got you covered for all of those livery options too. So come with me in association with TMC the Model Centre. Check out their second hand listings on their website today for a comprehensive range of rare and hard to find must have items. Hurry and grab yourself a bargain today at themodelcenter.com but it's always really nice to follow a model from its initial announcements right on through and TMC gave us a lot of opportunities to delve into those livery samples and the EPs and really get a behind the scenes look at just how this model was coming along and it really is an eye opener to see just how much work and effort goes into bringing a model from the mere idea of wouldn't it be nice to have a ready to run model of X, Y or Z all the way through to actually delivering it to market. So today we're going to be taking a good long close look at that G5 model with the example that I bought at the Great Electric train show and certainly I've been looking forward to this model for quite some time. So does it live up to expectations? Is it as good as what we were led to believe when we saw all those livery samples in the flesh? Well come with me and let's find out. The Bankman G5 is no stranger to this channel. We were lucky enough to be able to take a good close look at the EP samples and the livery samples and uh, it's really quite exciting now that the uh, production models have finally appeared and these are being done as an exclusive for TMC, the model center. And um, they've got a number of different liveries available covering from the early Northeastern Railway livery, later LNER livery, and then also the BR livery. Now these were a very long lasting class of locomotives being built from 1894 to 1901. There are actually 110 of these built and all but two of those survived through to BR ownership although um, they did start to be withdrawn fairly quickly and were all gone by 1955 with none saved for preservation. 
although currently there is a new build underway so we will soon be seeing and hearing the sounds and sights of the G5 running across preserved railways in the UK. Until then, the best option is this model form, and one of the uh, variants which TMC are doing is that new build in a northeastern railway green. Although I've chosen to go for this particular one when I picked up a uh, main range version for myself. This is catalogue number 35-251Z, and this is in its original guise as the O Class O tank number 1759 in the Northeastern Railway lined green. And we can see there it's equipped for next 18 DCC decoders. Uh, the price that uh, these are going for is £189.99. And as I said before, they're available exclusively through TMC. And uh, they are available in all different versions both with and without DCC sound. The box is a fairly standard Backman box, and on the back we've got that potted class history. Um, there's quite a few different uh, modifications that took place on this class over the course of its lifespan, and a number of these are catered for in the tooling. And these are an absolute must for uh, modelers of the uh, LNER system. All the way from uh, Wearside, right down to uh, London in later years they did work uh, Epping Onger, uh, Seven Sisters, places like that and um, one of the lines that these were put to use on in direct competition with uh, the motor bus transport is actually the line from uh, Hartlepool to Ferry Hill and part of that line we've actually walked as a, a disused railway walk and it's quite interesting to see what's left of uh, one of the primary lines that these locomotives worked on. Just sliding this out of all the packaging, we've got a separate pack of additional detail. These are finished as per the locomotive that they go on, so we've got that Northeastern Railway green and lining there on the uh, cab shutters. And the locomotive itself, really quite heavy, I uh, must admit, taking it out there. Um, there's a good amount of weight. This does seem to be quite biased towards the front wheels. These are, of course, the driving wheels, and that will make sure that uh, this does have pretty good pulling power. We have additional pickups on the rear bogey as well. So we've got an eight wheel pickup over quite a reasonable wheelbase. So it'll be interesting to see just how well this runs on the layout. I can see we've got wiper pickups on the backs of the wheels and these don't look like they need any adjusting out of the box. Now the option I've chosen is the as original Northeastern Railway livery. Just a quick look in the pamphlet that comes with this gives us some information about where the detail parts go. This is always really useful because back in the day they didn't tend to tell you, uh, which was a bit of a nuisance. And um, we've uh, also got some information uh, here about uh, where the fireman's tools go, lubrication. Uh, this model is equipped with firebox glow and flicker and we will be doing a full DCC fit of this and this shows us exactly how we get in to be able to do that. So stay tuned for the last third of the video for information on the DCC fitting. Now first up that I wanted to uh, compare is how well the Northeastern Railway Green matches up with the previously issued J72 uh, which Backman did put out in this Northeastern Railway a passenger green although it later turned out that they were mistaken from a, uh, a photographic grey works photo but it proved so popular on pre-order that they, they made it anyway and I'm actually really glad that they did but uh, this is exactly the same colour paint and uh, just looking there, just trying to match them up, we are under some quite bright lights. So, um, I don't know, actually, looking at that, it does look like the G5 is ever so slightly lighter. Uh, but it's not a huge amount, and actually, I'm looking on the camera, it's more noticeable on the screen than it is in real life. And certainly, as stable mates, the pair of these would be quite happy going together. 
The locomotive itself is pretty much as we saw on that EP that we're able to run here on Weir Yard. This particular variant has the wheel on the front instead of the dart, and this is characteristic of that uh, late Victorian locomotive design. The printing on this is absolutely exquisite. We've got fully sprung buffers. The uh, vacuum standard is fitted from the factory, and then we've got the Westinghouse pump. This is again something that moved around on the locomotive um, over its lifespan, some of them starting out with it in the cab, later on it being moved up here to the front. Some of these were also fitted for push-pull working, which makes them the absolute perfect locomotive for a small end-to-end -end branch line. And if you want a small sleepy backwater of the Northeastern Railway system, or indeed further afield on the l &E -R system in later days, then this is the perfect locomotive for you to be able to make use of that. As we saw on the EPs, there are different versions of the bunkers with uh, expanded hoppers available, which was one of the l &E -R modifications to allow for greater coal capacity. The printing on these drop shadowed letters is really second to none. You can see there we've got multiple passes with the gold, the black, the white and the red that I can all see there and that's all come out really, really nice. Again, really crisp and clean printing on the number on the bunker. Looking at that, quite frankly, there is no real need that I feel to add etched nameplates onto there or number plates even. Looking to the rest of the model, the uh, safety uh, valve bonnet is really quite shiny. We've got that lovely metalized finish. And this again is something where there are variants between different versions with either the ram's bottom or the Ross style safety valves. The dome too also move depending on boiler type, but we have an accurate rendition of the pre-grouping model, and that's something which I plumped to go for. I, I am a bit of a sucker for pre-grouping models. Inside the cab, we've got a lot of additional detail, which you can see in there. Plus, we've got the firebox flicker. It's nice to see this becoming a standard feature on steam locomotives, certainly something that makes fuller use of the DCC functionality. The uh, trailing uh, wheels on the uh, pony truck here is um, sprung loaded, which ensures that this model is able to take in some of the undulations on the track. And we get brake rigging factory fitted as standard. And uh, you can see here we've got the couplings in the slimline tension locks and uh, NEM pockets, again the same on the back, really easy to swap out if you wish. And uh, this rear bogey is actually quite pleasingly held by the screw and spring mechanism. So unlike um, some other uh, models that I've seen with the, uh, the four-wheel bogey where this tends to do its own thing and be a bit of a nuisance, this does keep this uh, rear bogey uh, right where it needs to be, which is um, quite a nice positive um, uh, action on that. The funnel itself is um, nicely done. There, there is a little bit of a line there from the construction, but it's not really that noticeable. And actually, I'm only seeing it on the camera screen. Uh, when you look at it in real life, it's very, very difficult to see that, if at all. Looking down the top of the boiler, we've got a lot of detail here. You can see on top of the tank sides and up onto the cab roof. Now the cab roofs, there are a number of different versions that have been tooled up and I really do like these whistles. Even though they sit quite proud, they don't feel at all prone to damage, which I've seen on other makes of models where the whistles tend to get caught and uh, run the risk of getting broken off. We don't get any of that here. And the safety valve bonnet as well is finished in a really quite nice metalised uh, finish. When we look to the portholes on the front of the cab, the glazing is done really well with no real prismatic effect. We can see through and um, I do like the really quite neat finish there on the lining where it goes round. We've got all metal uh, handrails and pipework and I do love all of this, uh, the Westinghouse pump with all of the different intricate parts, not only painted in the uh, appropriate colours, but uh, really nicely lined as well. That lining is exquisite, and we will check this uh, on the rolling road, 
um, but it does look like the wheels are uh, lined properly so they don't end up with that kind of oscillating uh, look to them. On the rear we've got again factory fitted vacuum standards, some really quite nice sharp crisp printing on the buffer beam and then we've got um, extra metal fitted parts including that lamp standard which is quite robust and uh, appears to be a brass etched part. On DC running, got this on the rolling road and it powers up quite nicely. We don't seem to have any real oscillation uh, of the lining. A little bit of a wobble on that rear wheel but I think that's more an optical illusion from when the crank weight is going round. On DC as well, we get a constant glow from the firebox glow. It's not overpowering and actually it's a really great colour and it's very reminiscent of my coal fire at home. So Backman have got the colouring on that absolutely perfect. Changing it up, moving it the other way and again we've got a really good smooth response and it does feel like there is plenty of power in reserve. The firebox flicker stays lit right down to quite a low voltage and we do see a little bit of a flickering pulse there before it goes out and then the locomotive stops. When it comes to DCC fitting I'm going to be fitting a Trainomatic Next18 decoder and uh, we do have a link to the Trainomatic decoder in the description box down below which is available through their UK stockists Tram Fabrique. When it comes to getting into the model there are first of all two screws at the back just there one and second one there and then we're just going to need to very carefully lever up the front coupling and that then exposes another screw just underneath here and then we should be able to just very very carefully and gently slide the chassis out in full. And just showing you in there, we've got a really nice lump of lead inside the boiler. It's uh, secured in with these two hidden screws. And it's nice to see that all that decoration does go right through underneath. Just looking in there, we've got plenty of room in the tender. And this is where the decoder will be going. And we've also got a pre-fitted speaker underneath. So if you want to go down the sound fitted option, then all you need is the appropriate uh, decoder. And then looking further into this, we probably also have a little bit of room if you do want to fit a stay alive just underneath that motor. It's quite a small motor, but nice and firmly in place in the brackets. You can also see that dual LED light there on the back for the firebox flicker. And then we've got a gear tower that just comes down here driving the rearmost of the driving axles. When it comes to fitting that decoder, all we need to do is very carefully take off the blanking plate and then it's simply a case of fitting in the next 18 decoder that we've got here. Again, that just goes in the same way around that we saw the blanking plate. It's just as simple as that quick check just to make sure that all is well and that click and we're in shouldn't have it at any kind of an angle and then we're good to get the body back on just simply a case of line up the chassis and then those screws go back in sliding back in the front coupling and then we're good to take it off to the programming track. By default, it's set to number three. I'm going to be programming it as 1759, which just seems the easiest number to set this locomotive as. With the locomotive on the layout, I'm just going to give it some power. And uh, just building up ever so slowly, you can see we've got a really nice smooth crawl from a standing start. This is with the Trainomatic decoder. Slow it down, change direction. Again, really nice smooth response, which is exactly what you want with this type of locomotive. You give it a little bit more, that's at 30 out of 128 speed steps. Bring that down to zero, change direction. That's up to 40. 
We've got a nice response, but it's smooth, which is really important. Testing it out on some point work now, we've got it set to 50 out of 128 speed steps. And the insul frog and the uh, electro frog points are taken with ease. When it comes to running, the locomotive performed really quite well. In fact, it punched well above its weight for similar 044 style locomotives here on Weir Yard. On the torture test track, it took on a longer than I would have expected train up and down the 5% gradient through radius 1 curves, with only a small amount of slipping evident. That weight balance as well really does make for a strong performer on the main line, and I had it running with a 6 coach train, with no issues whatsoever, including on the gradients that I have. Through point work as well, the model performed really quite well, taking in insul frog, electro frog, and also double slips and such like, with the greatest of ease. Out of the box, the model does run pretty well, although the instructions do say that it will improve with some running in. The pickups too were uh, all where they should be, and unlike some previous models, uh, we didn't have to adjust any of those wiper pickups at all, which really is how it should be, and this model shows that it can be. All in all, the performance really was good, with only an ever so slight wobble evident on the rear axle's lining and uh, a degree of vibration from the motor at times. And I put this down to needing to fine tune some of the back EMF SCVs. I think this is a coreless motor, and they can be a little bit more of a nuisance to get set up absolutely fine. But all in all, the performance was pretty good. And even though out of the box that weight balance was a little bit peculiar, you can see the method in the madness and it really does go together to produce a great running locomotive. On the tracks the uh, firebox flicker is enabled using F3 and F4 to get the red and the yellow and this is for the trainomatic decoder. On the Zen Blue Plus decoder you'll find them on F1 and F2. So we turn now to the scores, and first up is build quality, and overall this is pretty well done. I have to say that uh, it's pretty robust, especially the whistle and all of that extra pipe work, and even with some heavy handling, there's really no sign of anything running the risk of falling off. I also like the method by which you get into the body, which doesn't jeopardise any of that detail, and it's really great to see. The only thing that I have to say that uh, was a little bit difficult is that uh, it would have been nice perhaps to have a roof that was held on with say magnets which would have allowed the placement of a crew within this cab a lot more readily and also would have given us the opportunity to admire some of that internal detail. It's only a small gripe but I have to say that all in all this is a pretty good model. Even the coal insert is reasonably well presented and there's enough room on top to put a dusting of real coal if that's the route that you want to go down. So I'm going to give this a 9.9. .9. On running quality, it did perform pretty well. The weight balance was perfectly done and I really like the way that this rear bogey is kind of captured with the spring and screw mechanism so it doesn't spring out and uh, end up getting all tangled in on itself that I've seen on other models in the past. There was just one small gripe with a bit of a wiggle on the lining on the rear axle. It wasn't excessive and certainly when this model was on the layout it really wasn't a huge deal. The only area where I have to say that there were a few little issues are the design of motor that Backman use. We get um, a lot of uh, difficulty with just getting that set up smooth and sweetly. The trainomatic decoder really does go a long way to sort that out and running quality out of the box is perfectly acceptable. But when I've tried uh, other decoders it does need a lot of tweaking on CVs and that's something which does seem to be a hallmark of the newer Batman locomotives. When it was running on Weir Yard, I did also notice very occasionally there would be a bit of a vibration would suddenly appear from the model and it would slow down ever so slightly, almost like the uh, core of the motor was hitting some kind of resonance frequency. 
It wasn't excessively bad, and I've seen this before on the improved precedent locomotive, but it's something of note. And I'm going to give this an 8.9. On DCC fitting and innovation, this really is an easy locomotive to get into. Just three screws, and the whole chassis pulls out quite neatly. We've got plenty of space internally, and there's a lot of thought that's gone into how you would actually DCC fit this. It's a really easy fit for a next 18 Dakota, and with that speaker already in place, sound fitting of these locomotives really is a doddle. There is a factory fitted sound option that is available, but any next 18 sound decoder will fit into this and spark up some sounds really quite readily. And often fitting of the speaker is one of the most difficult things to do, so that is an amazing plus. I also like the two LED firebox flicker effect, which gives us some options for having quite a nice and subdued firebox flicker in the cab. It's a feature that I do like to see, although one area which I think could be improved is having the flickering actually hard encoded into the circuitry so you don't have to then set up on additional CVs the flickering effect on the decoder. That said, I'm going to give this a 9.9. .9. It's a really well designed locomotive and uh, pretty easy to get that decoder in place and up and running. On accuracy and quality of finish, well, the quality of finish is incredible. It's really sharp and crisp, and I really do like this Northeastern Railway green. When we looked at some of the other EPs and uh, uh, livery samples, the BR and the LNER black versions were really quite crisp as well. And all in all, this is a model that really does feel like it's gone through a lot of refinement to give us something special. The uh, accuracy of it is second to none, with so many different versions able to be tooled. This isn't a one-size-fits-all G5, certainly. The tooling has been expertly designed to be able to bring us as many of those 110 classmates as possible, from the very early Northeastern Railway days right through to the ends of their lives in the BR period. And that means that there is a plentiful choice to choose from. Plus, we've got that new build example as well. This pre-grouping example, it has to be pointed out, is different to the later model versions and is an accurate representation of a pre-1923 G5. And all in all, there really isn't anything to fault, so I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. On value for money, the RRP on these is £189.99. It must be remembered that these are a special commission that has been done exclusively for TNC, and they have put an amazing amount of investment into making sure that these models are second to none. It's also the case that they have uh, paid up front for six full production runs of these models to give you all of the different livery options that are available and in the grand scheme of things that puts it well in the ballpark of what you would expect to pay for uh, exclusive Backman models such as this. The sound fitted options come in at a reasonable uplift above that and they are currently all still available. As you heard in our EP video that sound suite really is great and these are a joy to behold. For a locomotive on a small northeastern set end-to-end -end, uh, passenger line, these are an absolute must. All in all, on value for money, I'm going to give these an 8.3, and that gives us a very respectable 47 out of 50 as the final score for these G5 locomotives. We've got a link in the description box that takes you to the TMC website where you can find all of the different versions of these models. My top picks are the Northeastern Railway Green. It really is a beautiful colour rendition. And you can go either for the new build example to fit with a preserved railway or the uh, as-built example here as number 1759. And these are sure to sell out pretty quickly. The LNER black versions and the BR black versions too really are superb and I was blown away when we got to see the EPs and livery samples of these. All in all this is a great model, filling a niche 
in the LNER and derivative locomotive stable and it has the first 044 from the LNER constituents. This is an amazingly well done locomotive and bodes well for any future Backman models featuring this wheel arrangement. With that really quite cunning distribution of weight, this makes sure that this locomotive is not hampered in any way when it runs on your layout and certainly this is from the ground up a well-designed and well-realized model. I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative and we've tried to put in a lot of really great close-ups of the model that I bought but if you want to see some of the other livery examples then we do have that link in the description box to take you to where we reviewed exclusively all of those livery samples that were coming through at the time and a huge thank you to TMC for allowing us that exclusive close look of those models and I'd love to hear from you in the comments section just what do you think about this G5 locomotive is it something that really does plug a gap in the ready-to-run market would you like to see more locomotives come through like this and what are your thoughts on all of those different detailed differences that TMC and Backman have tooled up to be able to bring to market do you like the fact that pretty much any of the 110 strong member of the class can be modelled or would you prefer a much more generic or simplistic model that maybe glosses over all of those and it brings you a kind of a feel of a G5 at a slightly lower price? I'd love to hear from you in the comments section down below. Don't forget as well that we've got a link to TMC to help you find all of the different versions of the models that are available and uh, they are sure to prove pretty popular. My top picks are that Northeastern Railway green version and also the BR black liveried versions are sure to be popular and certainly if you want to go down the sound fitting route then the factory sound certainly is something special indeed. And uh, don't forget as well to hit that like button and uh, share the video, subscribe to the channel too and be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up by ringing that bell and you can of course head on over to Patreon and help support the channel to keep making the videos that you want to see. We've got some really great rewards there so do go and take a look and it's a perfect way that you can get something and help the channel at the same time. We've also got the full merch store down below and uh, all of your favourites are there. Gronk it up. Billy's replacement speakers, of course, the ever popular. And uh, we've got several other designs as well. Do go and check them out for t-shirts, hoodies, mugs and more. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take absolutely great care of yourself. And I'll see you then. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with TMC, the Model Centre. Check out their comprehensive and fully stocked website at themodelcenter.com. For project ideas, why not look at their airbrush offers at the link in the description and have a go at creating your own weathering and graffiti masterpieces. It couldn't be simpler. I'd like to thank everybody over on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to our Patreon heroes. Without you guys over on Patreon, we really wouldn't be able to keep making the video content that you see on this channel. And don't forget that you can also head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk and check out the different tiers of rewards. Thank you so, so much. You are absolute legends.